Welcome to Fortune Cookies Tarot Live. Hi, guys. So I was going to spend the afternoon doing um, production videos, but uh, I, I think it's going to be better if I just do this particular subject live. Um, I woke up and saw all the hubbub about the polo match that Harry and Meghan were at. And I just think, gosh, let's find out why she always buys a dress that's too small. Um, whether that kiss was real and why was Harry wearing the same outfit as Nacho? Um, as always, I am a tarot practitioner for over 35 years. Thanks everybody for being here. Um, we're going to jump right in and I'm going to use a new feature on here. Grumpy Stepper. Good evening, fella. Um, there's a clip feature on here. So I'm going to try using that clip feature. I'm going to see if it clips right now. And it created a marker. That's fantastic. So uh, let's let's head right into this. I'm going to pull up our card view. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Hello, Prima Darling. Hello to all of my amazing mods, especially the Hutches. Grumpy Sapper, I'm going to get you a wrench, too. So I'm not going to do it right now because I have to jump onto too many screens. But uh, you're going to get a wrench very, very soon because you all protected me from the double B yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Gregopedia has no idea what happened with the double B, but uh, <laughs> you left the screaming women singing in the bar. Is there karaoke in your bar too? Grumpy, that's amazing. Oh, I so want to take a trip over. So, all right, let's, let's make the card view nice and big. And I've got my Cosmo Tarot today. We're going to work with this, but as you guys always know, I switch it up. I use all kinds of different decks. So let's talk about Polo. So what I have to... Polo, Marco. Marco. Polo. <laughs> Gregopedia is here painting as usual. So apparently... Oh, let me bring my mic in a little bit more. Apparently, um, Harry and Meghan had a lot of boom mics at this Polo match. It was a charity match. Uh, Royal Salute sent a Bali, which was Harry's team and his good buddy Nacho twinsies. They were wearing the same outfit. Um, they he was playing for Grand Champion. They did beat uh, Nacho's team, so Harry beat Nacho. Um, but apparently, they think that this uh, polo is going to become like the people's sport. Like they're going to bring polo to the United States. I guess. I don't know. They're going to popularize polo. Uh, they had some boom mics there, presumably for their Netflix show, because they are talking about doing this polo program. I, I can't even say it. it's too many Ps, polo program. Um, so apparently they're going to do that. But let's take a look and see if they are going to be able to light up polo to be a popular sport in the United States of America. Okay, so we're gonna put a marker here as well. So we're taking a look to see if the Harry and Meghan team and the show that they're gonna do for Netflix is going to popularize polo in the United States. If any of you have questions, if you wanna add into this, just pop your comments in bold so I can see them all bold. I won't think that you're yelling at me. So is it going to work? The world. Well, sometimes when we see the world, that's people changing the world. Oh, Sharon, I'm going to get to that PETA article. Don't you worry. I've got a PETA article on it. The Hierophant, the greater powers that be, and the Seven of Cups in reverse, it's not very accessible. Thank you, Grumpy Sapper. It is the sport of the rich and entitled. Nine of Swords. Oh, this is a let them eat cake moment and the Knight of Cups. So two of Wands. This is not just them. So this is not just Harry and Meghan pushing this polo agenda. <laughs> there are other powers that are behind this. So it may, in fact, be Netflix that is kind of pushing this agenda. So um, I, I think they've got some backers here 
the world. They're trying to change the concept of the game. They're trying to present it to people. <laughs> uh, Mercury and Leo, yes, you can ask questions, but ask them about Harry and Meghan and the polo thing. Um, I will do a live for you guys a little bit later on, okay? So I'm going to do a couple of lives today. So lives are easy for me. So they're, they're trying to change the concept of polo with others, but here's the problem. We're in the worst economy in 70 years. Uh, an expensive game like this. I did read the details. It's something like the Polo Pony start at $44,000 and their care and upcre upkeep upkeep uh, runs about $22,000 per year. And that's just for like the feed, the training and the, um, the some of the veterinary care. That was my understanding. So yeah, I don't think- put stickers on the horses. That's a great point. They have to put stickers on the horses like race cars. That would be kind of cool yeah. if they did that. Yeah, if they I had. Want, I want to see the, like the Tide team. You, know? you want the Tide team. I don't know if that's going to happen. The Bud Light team. Bud Light could use a boost or, anyway. Or, or, actually, it could be like Adam Morgan. So it's like a Purina versus, you know, Blue Buffaloes. <laughs> <laughs> Greg and PD has got some marketing ideas here. So 30 people here, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Love more subscribers. We love to grow this community. So um, it looks like this is just not the right timing. People just don't have the money to get involved in this. It's almost um, a let them eat cake moment. I really do want to say that because I don't know about you guys, but I don't have $44,000 for a new vehicle, let alone a shiny new polo pony. So, um, yeah, not really good. It's, it's the same thing with the Formula One. It's not accessible to people. Like You can't go in your backyard and make your own Formula One race car. You can't go in your backyard and make your own Formula One race car. I really need a mic on you, honey. Um, you know, we could do Formula One in our backyard. We have the room. Why don't we do that? We have our own Grand Prix. Have our own Grand Prix. <laughs> also, you know, just so you guys know, the Paris to Dakar is my favorite car race. I try and watch that most years. I, I sometimes miss it, though. Paris to Dakar, the super fun race. It's like the cannonball run of Europe. I love it. Um, so here... The, the sad thing is, is that they they've lost the plot on this. They really it's so inaccessible there. It, it's like saying, well, you know, why doesn't everybody have diamonds? Why doesn't everybody, uh, you know, participate in polo? This is something new and interesting. That's really what they think they're doing. Their thinking is so siloed and isolated on this with the hermit card. They're just. Netflix is grasping at straws. They're really just trying. So let's take a look. I have a list of questions here, but <clears throat> just get yourself a pair of Louboutins, Greg says. I have a pair of Louboutins. Just the one. Just the one? Just the one. Okay, give me your credit card. <laughs> Gregopedia just made the best noise ever. <laughs> So is Netflix pushing this? Is Netflix pushing the polo line? Are they pushing this for the TV show? Two of Wands. There we go. Yes. Seven of Cups in reverse again, guys. Nine of Swords. You saw me shuffle the cards. I did shuffle them. Knight of Cups, these are all the same cards. And the Nine of Pentacles, he is so isolated. And he's got yes people around him. Speaking of Harry, he's got yes people around him that are telling him, this is going to work. This is going to work. Six of Pentacles is not going to make any money. Ten of Cups underneath. Everybody's got a real positive feeling about this. But it's really not going to work. It's it's just, It was a charming moment in the uh, Pretty Woman movie but it is not something that's going to appeal to the crowds. This is seriously flying in the face of all the people that are struggling financially right now. Really terrible. So um, bad, bad idea. So we're going to switch up the decks because I want to talk about drizzle. Um, we're going to talk about drizzle, the polo pony that passed away in 2010 um, drizzle, and I will put the 
copy. I'm going to put a copy to a uh, link to the PETA article. Um, those of you that remember the entrance of Meghan Markle, she was very specific about uh, her love of rescue dogs and those sorts of things, taking care of animals. Um, polo is a rough sport on animals. The animals are very expensive. They are uh, highly trained. Drizzle was a polo pony that was used both by Prince William and Prince Harry. Um, Prince Harry took her out. They typically use, I think, four ponies during the course of a single game. Hi, Hutch. So, um, you know, they do switch them up. Drizzle was used for the second half of, again, a charity match. Uh, she was female. She was pregnant at the time. And he rode her off uh, because she was she was struggling um, and she had a heart attack and died. Um, uh, you know, fortunately, he did get her off the field. So people didn't see her pass away. Uh, but PETA has some very specific opinions about polo and the use of polo ponies. This is not, um, having having ponies uh, pass away is not uncommon, unfortunately. Um, it I don't see in this article that he insisted that he use her, but it, this is not uncommon for these ponies to have grave injuries or pass away. So let's see. If this is just the way Harry feels about the ponies, if he just does this, um, if he treats them like livestock. Now, those of you that have been fans of mine for a while, you do know that I come from a dog training background. Um, I did train security dogs. I trained companion pets. There's a certain component of uh, farm life and, and the animal world that sometimes treats animals very much like livestock versus family members. I always trained with my animals that were in my care to, to be treated as family members. Um, I was very specific about not imposing some of the antiquated training concepts that were painful or coercive. I usually worked uh, with my animals with psychology. I did work with aggressive dogs. So there are, you know, some things that you have to do with aggressive dogs uh, that, you know, some people may think that they are a bit stricter and hardline. Um, but, uh, you know, when you have an aggressive dog, sometimes it's either you have to be very, very strict with them or they will not be able to continue. Um, so that was one of the gifts that I had. I could, I could correct some aggressive dog behavior. Um, the security dogs are really great though. They were, they were really fun to, to build those and train them. So let me get some coffee. I have a pony. <laughs> so let's look at Harry's attitude toward these animals. We're going to take a look at that. The fool. He's reckless. The fool is always reckless when he's in reverse. We want to remember that. The fool, when he's in reverse, is not a great guy. Page of Wands, not having control over those emotions, not having control over the actions, and reacting very, very, very uh, spontaneously, abruptly, not thinking about what he's doing. Two of Pentacles, this is going in any direction that he wants, digging deep, making the horse work very, very hard. Eight of Pentacles, it's all done in the spirit of being a good sportsman. That's really the, the place that he's coming from. Five of Pentacles, not really worried about what's going to happen at the end of it all. Um, I don't know if um, the late Queen Elizabeth would like this attitude just does not seem um, in, uh, in, in, um, in the same vein as how she felt about her horses. So up here, seven of swords, everybody knows this. You guys know my girlfriend, Alicia Wicker calls this the sneaky snacker card. This is where we see the negative behavior, the negative intentions come out bold and in the light of day. Under here, the eight of swords, this is just the way he thinks. So unfortunately, I think he is just a bit too spoiled to really understand um, the impact of his attitude. He's very close-minded on this idea. 
So uh, that is unfortunate. How, how is this attitude toward the polo ponies, this uh, very livestocky attitude toward the polo ponies. They, really, Harry feels like they are a tool that he can use to play the game, whether it's a charity match or not. Um, you know, I think he plays hard to make as much money as possible for the charity. That's kind of the excuse that he uses. How is this going to affect the Netflix programming that they are going to put out? Six of Wands, it's not going to be a success. The devil, Netflix is going to say bye-bye. Ten of Wands, it's too much. Nine of Pentacles, they're going to leave him out in the wind. Wheel of Fortune, this is once again, as somebody said a little bit further up in the comments. Let me see, where was it? Where was it? Uh, Vicky, you nailed it. Their timing is terrible. So Wheel of Fortune, this is something that's going to go in reverse. The Chariot, I don't think he's, when they say this program's not working, I don't think he's going to say, oh, you're right, it's not working. Let's try something different. I think he's going to double down and say, this is something I'm really good at. Let's keep working on it. Let's keep working on it. So now to date, we've got the failure with uh, veterans. We've got the failure <laughs> with um, parenting, <laughs> like there's no parenting going on. The star here, I think this is one of their last maneuvers for Netflix. The star is in reverse. I think it's one of their last ditch efforts that they're going to work on. So, um, that is a bummer for them. So I think his negative attitude toward the animals is going to negatively affect the programming with Netflix. <laughs> While we're at it, why don't we take a look at this alleged cooking show that Megan is going to do? This wasn't on my list of things, but let's take a look at this alleged cooking show that she's going to do. Um, you know, during the pandemic, uh, my friends challenged me on my personal social media. Uh, we were all doing like helpful hints and I have a whole host of cast iron pans. So one of my girlfriends said, please show me how to care for cast iron pans. So I did that and it was fun. And then I made a couple of things online, not like a cooking show. It was just like showing people how to make things that I make. I do some intentional cooking. I also make intentional cocktails, which is a little bit of spell work in your food. Um, food is my love language. If you are someone that I like, I am going to make you food and I'm going to make you something delicious and I am probably going to make you a little bit fat. So that is my love language. That's the way that I do things. But so I think Megan is trying to, um, I think she is trying, hang on, Nana. I'm just going to star your comment there. Um, I think Megan is going to try and promote herself as someone who uses food and delicious things as her love language. Let's see how that Netflix programming is going to work out for her. Let's check it out. Let's check it out, kids. See what we get. <laughs> Beverly, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, one handful of gripe tomatoes. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> so let's see. Let's see. Oh, again, you know, I, I think, Vicki, this is for you. We're getting this Wheel of Fortune in reverse, which is just a symptom of bad timing or a, a symbol of bad timing. We're seeing bad timing. I think from now on, whenever I do readings about them and we're talking about timing, the wheel of fortune is just the timing is not right. So how is this program going to work? Five of one, she's going to have a lot of people involved in this program and they, they're all going to be working very, very hard together. But I think ideas are going to be thrown out of hand. We have this uh, Knight of Pentacles in reverse. So it looks like anyone that tries to do anything with the program to adjust it, I think it's going to be cast out of hand. Page of Pentacles, I think she's going to continue with the ideas that she has about the program, 
what's going to work. So she's not going to work with a formula, so to speak, if any of the producers at Netflix say, well, this is the kind of formula that works. It gets butts in the seats. It gets people watching. Um, hello, Samantha. Everybody throw up some hearts and flowers for Samantha. She's still recovering. Our good friend out there, she's uh, she's getting better, but she is still recovering. So we want to make sure we throw her some love. Let me throw Samantha some love. And where, where are my emojis? There they are. I'm going to throw you some flowers, baby doll. Over there in, in beautiful, the gorgeous Emerald Islands. So here, she, again, Megan is not going to be taken off her idea of what she thinks she should be doing and what's going to work well. And she's just going to be almost toxically positive about it. At the end of it all, this two of pentacles, is, it's just an idea that's not going to fly. Um, she's not going to have the um, expertise and she definitely don't. It doesn't have the um, magnetic personality that's going to bring people to want to watch this. I, I, in, in my opinion, and this is psychically, I do think that she is going to go too big and try and come off as very, very knowledgeable about different things. I suspect that she is sitting there watching uh, the Cooking Julia Child movie. What was it? Is that Canadian gal that was in it? Wasn't it Amy Adams, I think? What was that? It was what? Julia and Julia. And was it Amy Adams? I think so. Yes, Julie and Julia. And it was a, a movie. I, I think it was a, a semi biographical. I think a gal. Um, read through the Julia Child cookbook, which I have, and it's fantastic. If you ever need to make anything uh, specifically French, um, it's it's really amazing. I made the souffle out of there too, and uh, the ratatouille I made out of there. Uh, but then we we opt for the Disneyland uh, ratatouille because it's it's more fun. The stacked one from the movie. There's a specific name for that one. It's actually really really good. So. Um, who did? Julia Child's got a copy of books to Why would she? It's just kind of like piling onto her book. I don't know. I just don't. I, I don't. I don't think it's very cool. Um, oh, Prima, you are funny. <laughs> Another Ina Garden. I, I really like Ina. Um, so yeah, Debbie. People are worried how to feed their families. We're not really worried about getting a uh, how to make a lemon elderflower reduction. Um, even though I think we do have some elderflowers in our fridge, don't we? I, I think we do. I think we have it in the spell drawer. The spell drawer. So um, I, I think she is going to attempt to come off as extremely knowledgeable, and she's just not going to be. It, it's just, I think the, the recipes are going to be too lofty. Um, it's not going to be macaroni and cheese. It's going to be macaroni and lobster cheese. Like, she's going to go that route. It's going to try and be super, super fancy. Um, you know, she did make that burger, though. That burger looked pretty good on that that video she made before she was with Harry. Under here, King of Swords, this is a bad idea. It's not a great idea. Um, so there we are. So let's move on to the dress. We're going from the cooking show to the dress. I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm a little bit chubby at this point in my life. I am postmenopausal. I am in my 50s. And a lot of my clothing does not fit. I have it stored in boxes. If I lose weight, I will be able to fit in them again. Um, but I am getting to the point where that battle of the bulge has been lost. And I think I may be giving away some of my clothes to my daughter, who is a size zero, uh, as once I was. And uh, whatever she doesn't want, we'll give away to other people. So why... Does Megan insist on wearing clothing that does not fit her? So I am a, uh, what they call an hourglass shape. I'm one of those lucky gals, but I'm Italian and I have a very Italian body. Um, I do have a little bit of a waist. I don't have a great waist, but oh, grumpy, you with your bikini. I, I hope you have like one of those monokinis, like, um, <laughs> what is his name? Sasha Baron Cohen? Oh, all right. Bora, <laughs> Bora bikini, <laughs> go for it, man. <laughs> so, um, 
I, you know, I am very conscious of things needing to be fitted. Um, I, I'll be honest. And even when I was at an optimal weight, um, I would buy my correct size clothing and I would still have to have it altered because um, the top wouldn't fit the waist and the waist wouldn't fit the hips and the top and the, the hips have to make room. So um, I would have things altered all the time. Also, I'm very, very short. I am five foot one and three quarters, but I lie and tell people that I'm five two and um, I would have to have things shortened. It, it is not easy to purchase clothing off the rack unless you are this thin and you are a sample size. And the, the one company, Tahari, actually builds dresses pretty close to what my figure is. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. But for some reason, Megan buys her clothes way too small. Um, <laughs> so uh, what I would like to look at, um, and I'm just going to put up. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'll put up Prima's comments so we know what's going on here. So why is she buying things too small? There is a picture of the dress that she wore at the polo match, and there's a cutout in the waist, and it's huge. Paula M. just did a, a little program on it um, that was pretty informative. Um, when you see that same dress with the model in the promotional picture, the cutout is very tiny. So, you know, I looked at the dress and I said, yeah, this is this is a problem that I have. There's pulling. It's it's stretching. It's a great dress. The, the bow on the back is great. But why did she buy it too small? What's that? Oh, uh, Gregopedia said maybe she got it from Wish. So, Sharon, we're going to pop that up there and we're, we're going to ask that question. So because this seems to be a standard for her. She keeps buying things that are too small. Is she getting them for free? One card, two of cups. Yeah, she's promoting. She's absolutely promoting. Why are they not sending her the correct size? Page of cups. She's lying. She's lying. She's, she's telling them that she's a sample size. And she basically kills the relationships with these, um, these designers. So here, uh, Page of Cups is saying, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I'll fit in that. I'll fit in that. It'll be, it'll be the right size. Here, we're going to pull up Duchess Donation. <laughs> and Samantha, I shut my skinny girl up with chocolate too. Chocolate and wine, even though I find if I drink wine for like two days, I gain like 15 pounds. I'm like all of a sudden like way heavier. I may as well just shove those bottles in my pockets. So she's telling them she's the wrong size, but she's doing it in a very authoritative way with this King of Swords. Here, Page of Pentacles, um, the options are giving her, yes, yeah, she is not paying for them. I do think that she has to return them. The Death card, it kills the relationship when we look at it with this Three of Swords. Every time she does this, it wrecks the relationship with the designer. So um, she really just needs to stop doing that. So uh, that is a shame. And the lack of tailoring. Why are we not tailoring? Why are we not getting an appropriate size or going to a tailor? What the dilio? Who says that anymore? What the dilio? I say it. I say it. The lack of tailoring. Lack of tailoring. She doesn't have anybody to do her tailoring. She she does not have anyone here in the United States that she feels confident about doing tailoring. She this is a know-it-all situation. She wants to stick with herself. She wants to just she knows she knows best. She knows best. So that's unfortunate. All right. Want to talk about something else. Let's talk about the kiss. So everyone is buzzing about the kiss. It was a passionate kiss. It was a dramatic kiss. If you watch the video, it's not. It's not a dramatic kiss. It's a peck. She walks up with the cup. And, and I, I will tell you guys this. I did look it up because I saw some, some kerfuffle online about why, you know, why is she there? Why is she there? And there were a number of people that said the winner, the, the, the team that wins the captain, his paramour 
partner, wife, husband, whatever, will bring up the cup. I looked it up online. I didn't see it. I'm going to go into the American Polo Rules. Um, it was a, a fairly large document, so I did not dig into it today. So everybody that's jumping in, thanks for being here. We're talking about Harry and Meghan Polo, ill-fitting dresses, and uh, Polo Ponies named Drizzle. So if you missed any of that, you can go back. <laughs> yeah, Grumpy, what happens when you kiss a ginger? Isn't there isn't there something that happens? Isn't it, isn't it like a fairy die or leprechaun? falls over or something. I don't know. Garden gnome. I don't know. Oh, fun fact. I found out today, the guy who invented the garden gnome invented them so he could attract gnomes to his garden. thought that was really cool. Greg, we got to get a garden gnome this year. So let's see. Why? You're afraid of gnomes? You're a gnomophobe? Gregopedia is a gnomophobe. So if you guys have any supportive things to say to Greg, you can say it in the comments. <laughs> so let's see, what is the status of the relationship between these two? Because I did not see a passionate kiss. I saw a regular kiss. Oh, Prima said, if you kiss a ginger, it turns the ginger into a toad. So I'm going to put that up here. <laughs> People have ginger hair because of what they did in a previous life. Whoa, how about that? So hi, Bee Bear. Hi, Bee Bear. So let's see. What's the status of this relationship? Ace of Swords. Three of Swords crossing. We're doing a Celtic cross here, boys and girls. So Ace of Swords, where my tarot students at? Where my 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 protege is at? Deborah, I need your help on this, baby. The Ace of Swords is a new beginning. Slicing things off and starting a new beginning. Now, if this was by itself, for a moment, I'd go, okay, maybe they're at a point in the relationship where they're kind of restarting, they're refreshing the relationship, they're having a good time, they're maybe rewriting the rules or, you know, setting new goals but together, but it's a solo. We've got the Ace of Swords. This Three of Swords that comes in and either crosses or bolsters that situation, what is happening is heartbreak. They're not happy right now. Under the surface, this is going to tell us a lot. Ace of Pentacles. Where are those pentacles going? They're falling out of their pockets. They're not hanging around. So money is an issue. I am saying it now. Money is an issue. So they better save on those polo fees and <laughs> do something else. What's behind them? The past behind them. You guys that watch me know that this is my suitcase spot. And what this is, this is what you have to go back in the back into the past and repack your suitcase, unpack your suitcase bring this into the future or leave it in the past. For them, it's the king of cups. It's this excess of emotion, this uncontrollable emotion. The king of cups does not have control over his emotion when he is in reverse. He is all over the place. It's an excess of emotion. It's being super excited. It's getting into a relationship and not looking at all the details. It's just getting goofy and jumping in the sack and having a great time and not really looking at the full picture and not looking at the, um, and Deb, I'm going to put this up there. It's not a happy marriage. You got it. Bingo, honey. So I think that Harry needs to go back into the past. He needs to re-examine the, or, the origin of this relationship, the, uh, the genesis of this relationship, and see if it really was built on common goals, common sensibilities, common values. Let's see if that happens. So we're going to keep going with this. I did do a reshuffle just to get some more energy into the cards. What is the dominant energy? What are they letting everybody see? The Empress in reverse. What is that all about? So this card is always the dominant energy out in the future. This is not taking care of things, not nurturing things, not developing things. I think the glamour is off at this point. I think we're really starting to see that they're non-producers. They're just kind of, um, what, ne'er-do-well? Is that the right word, Greg? Not ne'er-do-well. 
ne'er-do-well. What is a ne'er-do-well exactly? Well, I think that's kind of them, right? Uh, but with more uh, malicious intent. Oh. I, I think theirs is just out of, for lack of better words, uh, stupidity. So what would be like a person who's like a laissez-faire kind of, a laissez-fairist? <laughs> is that a word? A <laughs> uh, uh, a Lazifarian. Um, so let's see what's in the immediate future. The tower in reverse. Tarot students again, where are you at? Tower in reverse is usually something we do to ourselves. We hamstring ourselves in that situation. So uh, we're going to do a little ladder here. This is how they see themselves. They see themselves as that page of wands. We're full of great ideas. We're going to do great things. We're going to be exciting here. How other people see them, Queen of Pentacles. They're not money makers. They are not putting the ducats in. They're not getting ducats in the pockets. Their hopes and fears, Ace of Wands, they're going to be able to start new projects, do new things, get people excited and put butts in the seats. But definite outcome to go with our tower card is the King of Pentacles. The Pentacles. This is going to cost them money all day long. This is something they did to themselves. The track that they have set themselves on financially are not good it does not look good at all so we're going to clean up this real estate and let's just check that one comment that i had that was starred um will they bring the children to see king charles let's take a look at that question on the table will the harkles bring the children to see king charles in May, there's an Invictus event. Are we going to get those kids? And I want you guys to remember, we are looking at the energies at the current moment. We know that Megan and Harry changed their mind all day long. So let's see what's going on here. The world in reverse, the six of wands, the king of pentacles. So the world in reverse, they, that's, this is interesting that we've got the world in reverse because this is something they can't stop. Um, this is something that they will either not go through with, or they will not stop from happening. So I'm saying that I think they're still undecided on this. The main goal would be to come back with some modicum of success under their belt, something that looks really good. Maybe they were hoping that this polo match was going to look really good. Maybe they were hoping that their TV show was going to look really good. I don't know if it's going to get produced before May, um, but the main goal would be to go there with some level of success and money in their pocket. Is that a possibility right now? Absolutely not. Eight of cups, they still have work to do. The moon, there are things behind closed doors that they have to work on. And Page of Swords, they're they're in too much conflict right now to go there. I think it would be very, very obvious if they went together that they're not on good terms. I'm saying it. I'm saying right now, I think it's up in the air still. So, um, Nana, sorry, I, I can't give you a definitive answer yet. We'll keep working on it. So, let's see. What did the other players think? The other polo players at this match, they didn't look real thrilled up there with Megan giving them the award or giving them the cup at the end of it all. Harry feigned, uh, like he didn't know he was getting who me, who me, who I'm gonna get it. Um, you know, big dork, he is not a good actor, he looks like a dork. Um, but he said something kind of craptastic to Nacho. So, what did the players on Harry's team think? Reminding you all that him and Nacho were playing on opposing teams. Let me just get these fun little stones out of the way. What did the players on Harry's team think? Ten of Swords, they're kind of over it. Page of Cups, they were nice enough. The Chariot, they couldn't wait to get out of there and get back to their own places. Um, Nine of Pentacles in the upright. Seven of Pentacles in reverse. They do not like that this was done. They would much rather had her stand down with this four of swords. They would much rather have had just a bunch of guys up there accepting an award from someone else. They they really would have liked that. Um, looking back, I think there's some discussion with the team owners. 
that they don't want that to happen again because it is too much of a distraction. It's not this, you know, ring gal like in the boxing trade. Um, I don't know if you guys have those in England where the, the girls walk around with the big cardboard number that says what what um, what round it is. Um, but I, they really, it, it, this was not a fun thing. They did not like it. They thought it was kind of a bummer. Um, do -do -do -do. So what Harry said to Nacho was when they announced the official winning, when they were up near the stage, um, they, they said, you know, uh, Royal uh, Salute sent to Bali versus Grand Champion, uh, three to one, uh, Royal Salute sent to Bali wins. And Harry said again, what a jerk. Uh, you know, like, can you, can you have any grace? Can you have any grace at all? How did Nacho feel about Harry saying that? Does he want to talk about it? <laughs> uh, fool in reverse. He thought it was reckless and thoughtless. Chariot in reverse. I think he did some damage to the relationship. And we've got the Ten of Swords upright. I think he definitely did some damage to that relationship. The magician in reverse, all the glamour is off and the five of cups there, we are walking away. We are now looking at the lack in the relationship, ace of wands, getting over it and the wheel of fortune. It was ill-timed. It was a dumb statement. He should not have said that. Um, I think he did some damage to the relationship. You know, there's something about Harry with this uh, deprecating kind of sense of humor that he has with his uh, friends and the people that he talks with. Uh, there was that issue when uh, King Charles had secured some financing from a Middle Eastern uh, person. I can't remember if it was a, a shake or something. And Harry was very haughty about it and was like, that was supposed to be my get. Um, very, very rude. You know, he just, um, again, the, the gal that he lost his... Um, lost his flower too. Um, he also, you know, said she was an older woman. Um, Prima, yes, he did it to John Travolta as well. You know, he just is really not very kind to people. And he thinks, sorry guys, sloppy shovel. Um, he thinks that that is charming and adorable being kind of rude. And I will tell you my, my teenager, um, has a little bit of that Scottish sense of humor from his dad. And he had a little brouhaha with one of his friends. And I said, you can't rip on your friends all the time. Like sometimes people can't take it. You have to, you have to dial that back. Apparently Harry thinks that he has a free pass for that. So uh, this does not look good. How is their relationship going to be going forward? This is Nacho and Harry. So let's see how their relationship is going forward, especially since they wore the same outfit. They literally had the same outfit on. So, so Katharina K. So this, Katharina K, this is entirely um, a uh, reading about Harry. So, <laughs> and Megan, sorry about that. But uh, if you want to do your own tarot, I would be more than happy to do that. There is a link in the description down below. Uh, you can book a private reading with me, but I will probably be doing a live later for everyone. So I have to drive a teenager someplace. And then after I'm done with that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some, some live readings for you all. So let's get to it. So let's see how his relationship with Nacho Let's see how, how Harry's relationship with Nacho will go. Oh, Katharina, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't read for myself at all, Katharina. So again, Harry's relationship with Nacho, Knight of Pentacles, looks like Quesada. Samantha, I'm going to put that up. Queso. 
Gregopedia said queso. Um, Knight of Pentacles. It looks like we're losing the foundation there. He kind of disrupted that, but it's crossed with the Ace of Cups. So we're probably not going to see any super evidence of that. I think it's not going to be uh, in our faces. The strength in reverse underneath. He's run out of patience. They have run out of patience for the relationship. Page of Pentacles. The relationship was built on the foundation of competitive sports, yada, yada, yada. So, um, you know, is, is that a great foundation? I don't think it is. 60 people in the watch. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Please be sure to hit that like and subscribe to me if you are interested in tarot and the royals and U.S. politics. Um, I may do a reading on Rishi Sunak later. I'm going to dip into um, I'm going to dip into some British politics because it looks like Rishi is having some interesting times. Deborah, just to fill you in, um, after they announced the winners, uh, they said that Royal Salute Sensabale won and beat. Nacho's team grand champions and Harry responded with again, he was a jerk. So in the future four of pentacles, I think we're going to be uh, seeing a more reserved relationship. The three of wands, there's really nothing that they have in common at this point. I think Nacho realizes that intuitively. I think Harry is like, Oh, whatever. Like he just thinks he's Teflon. He thinks he's Teflon Harry. Uh, two of pentacles, how others see them. They really don't see anything in common. Three of pentacles, there's still hope that they're going to do something. Now, I am getting intuitively that they were talking about doing a line of uh, like polo based clothing or like polo uh, gear or something. They, they were talking about doing that. Is that a good idea for Nacho? Probably not. His better senses with that high priestess are telling him that, you know, it's it's just not a great idea. It's not going to be lucrative. Hang on to your money, Nacho, with that four of pentacles. You've got to hang on to your money and not blow it on this bozo. Just saying. So I have a few more minutes before I got to drive around like an Uber driver. So if you guys have any questions about the polo situation, let me know now. Speak now or for Heather, ever hold your peace. Do, do, do. Greg, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Gregopedia? Well, is that a, an African or a European swallow? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I, you know, I think it's going to be like, uh, we're selling charity t-shirts and like, you know how, um, in the fall, it's always like football based gear in the United States is kind of popular. Like I have a really oh. cute sweater that says love and it, it looks like a football sweater, uh, like an old school football sweater, you know, we get like rugby style gear becomes voguish for a little bit. I think they're going to try and make it like polo gear. Uh, we will probably see this on the ARO, a American Riviera Orchard. Yes, we'll probably see this on the ARO uh, page eventually, but who knows? So, um, so if we're not getting any questions, I'm probably going to jump off and get my babies to where they need to go. But in the meantime, thank you everyone for stopping in. And I'm going to set up a live for later. So I will do readings for you guys. Um, you can buckle up um, probably in an hour and a half, couple hours from now. I will be back with another live. But thank you for watching. Grumpy, you're probably going to be asleep. So uh, I will likely see you tomorrow. <laughs> right, guys? Samantha, you take care. Deborah, I will talk to you later. I sent an email out to the Psychic News Universe team. We're having a meeting tomorrow about what we are doing with the channel and what we're doing with uh, establishing its own channel. So good things are coming up. I hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like your own private reading, there's a link down below in the signature, uh, in the, not in the signature, in the description. And you can book your own magical reading with me. I'm a little tight for the next week coming up, but I would love to see some of you privately. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks once again. Bye-bye.